Mr. Speaker, sir, the gentleman who gave evidence here as the second witness, Mr. Eric Kiriko, has been the board, public service board member in Kiambu County for the last six years. He is the person who was the right person to answer the questions about employment. He could have given the, the first hand information. He has been a member for the last six years. And honestly speaking, right now, he is employed by the deputy governor against court order, which I have here from Justice Macau. That Mr. Nyoro, as a deputy governor, he cannot nominate, he cannot employ, sack, or even transfer anybody in the Kiambu County. But he has gone ahead to employ over 50 staff. Some of them who are bloggers, their daily work from morning to evening is to do blogging, to malign my name. Honestly speaking, that is the person who was called here as a, as, as a main witness. He is an illegal employee as per the order from the High Court. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, that is uh, as per uh, Employment and Labor Relations Court Petition Number 172, Stroke 2019. And uh, there is a very clear ruling on the, on the orders. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, all the allegation by the County Secretary that the letters I signed for 26 staff members, whom some of them were working in my office, I think five of them were working within the headquarters, Mr. Speaker, sir, was not called to testify on the irregularities that he mentioned. How can you believe such a letter? He could have come here and taken a Bible to testify that it is true that there were irregularities and he mentions what type of irregularities they were, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that was not done. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Kiambu Public Service Board has three members presently. It doesn't have a quorum, but it has three members. None of the members was called to testify on the irregularities that I, I am assumed to have done in employing the cashews. I'm not part of the Public Service Board. All those members were recruited by the County Public Service Board. Mine was just to give them a letter in a ceremony in the last day of that appointment. But they had gone through the process of uh, recruitment by the County Public Service Board. The same with the casuals. They were given letters by the Public Service Board. They were interviewed by the County Public Service Board. Mr. Speaker, I urge this house that justice be done to all of the governors who will ever come in front of you. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, if you look at those documents, you will see that they are signed by different people. They are not only signed by one person. And I'm one of those persons. Once some are signed by the county secretary, some have signed. Some were signed by the, the, county, the, the secretary to the county public service board. And it is therefore not peculiar for me as a governor to have signed those letters. Mr. Speaker, on the allegation of influencing tenders, Mr. Speaker, There is no evidence that was adduced in front of you to suggest that I, gave, I was given any kickback in those tenders. Mr. Speaker, all of you know that when we are campaigning, we promise our people roads, to make roads for them. And it is not peculiar to Kiambu alone. Every elected person when campaigning, they say what they will do in the future. I said exactly that, even me. And honestly speaking, if you have the chance to visit Kiambu, you go and see Juja Road, the Gatwanyaga, Munyu Road, Kenari in Kamae Road. You see the road in uh, Odiru. You see another road 
in Ruiru. You see the desperation of those people for many years. Mr. Speaker, sir, for those procurement staff in my county who went ahead to advertise those tenders, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like the senators and you yourself to understand that these projects were not being done in one financial year. They go in two, three, three financial years. And that is why when they are quoting, they quote the whole amount, but it will be in different budgets, two or three budgets, before the roads are completed. So, Mr. Speaker, you cannot blame me honestly for a road that was not built for myself. It was, it, they were to be built for Kiambu people. And uh, honestly speaking, uh, I will repeat it again that to be elected, you have to give promises, and to execute the promises is not that easy. As a governor, I thought my most important thing is to spearhead the county to get to, to achieve development that we had promised our people, and therefore.